Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Aria, and I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has been helping me grow my channel. I really appreciate that. Um, I've decided that I'm going to start posting tutorials every Saturday morning, so keep your eye out for that. And in this tutorial, I want to show you how I made a really quick crystal glass shader using a procedural noise texture that you can apply to any mesh you like. So here we go. Okay, so open up a new scene and delete everything you see, and then we want to bring in uh, some type of mesh. So you can just go to File, Import, and bring in any format that you like. If you want to use the ones that I'm using here, um, I've got the links in the description. These are all um, public domain, so they can be used for any purpose that you want. Some of these ones here are actual um, Blender files, so if you do um, get one that looks something like this. You can just open it up in a new blender and just hit control copy and then you can just X out of here and then control V and you'll get it right in here and then you can just click on the armature and hit delete and now you've got your your base mesh. And because this is a shading tutorial let's go into the shading tab here and the first thing we want to do is add some lighting. So let's go into the rendered view here and you can see that there's um, nothing happening here because we're just reflecting the gray. So let's click here and go to world and then just click this dot here and we can add an environment texture open and find somewhere on your computer that has an HDRI. If you want to use the one that I'm using just go to hdrihaven.com and type in art studio. The link is also in the description. So now you can see that we've got some lighting happening, but we can't really see what our HDRI is doing. So let's click here. Um, and if we click this little arrow here, we can turn off transparent. And now you can see the HDRI in the background and how it's affecting the look of our scene. Then to change the position of the HDRI, um, we need to add a couple more nodes. So the best way to do that is just go to edit and preferences, go to add-ons. And if you search for node, You'll see an add-on called Node Wrangler. Just make sure that's turned on. And then you can click the HDRI and then hold Control and push T and it will automatically add the two nodes that we need. And then you can just use this um, Z rotation to give it the position that you want. So let's do something like that. And now you can see that there's um, a bit better contrast with the lighting and the shadows and stuff like that. Okay, so now we can start um, building our shader. So just click here and let's go back to object and we'll just click the mesh that we want to use and we'll hit the decimal key to zoom in. Then we'll just click here to add a new material and let's call this wolf. Let's set the roughness to zero, um, the IOR to 1.5 for glass and then we can set the transmission to one. And now you can see that we've got a basic glass shader. Now we can add um, some more nodes to get the faceted look. So hit Shift A and you can go to Vector um, and select Bump and then we'll just hook the normal up to the normal. And we're just going to leave this for now. We'll make some changes later. Hit Shift A again and you can either go to Converter or type in Color Ramp here. And then we're going to click on that and hold Shift and hit D to duplicate. Hook this up to the roughness and hook this up to the height. Now you can see the effect that the um, color ramp is having on the roughness. So if you grab this um, slider here and bring it up, you can see that it goes kind of from a frosted looking glass to more clear. So for um, my scene, I use more clear, but you can decide um, whichever works for you. And then we'll leave this one for now and I'll show you how we can utilize it later if you want, but um, you may not need this one. This is more just optional. Okay, so shift A again, and we're going to type in math to add in a math node, and then we can just shift D to duplicate that. Hook the value up to the bottom value here, and this value up to the factor over here. Then again, shift A, and we're going to type in RGB, and you can go to mix RGB right here. Click that on, and we're going to hook this up to the top value, and also to the factor of this color ramp here. Now we want to add um, two more nodes, which are the same nodes. So you can just go to texture here and click Voronoi. And then we're going to duplicate that. So shift D and then we're going to hook the distance, not the color up. So distance to color here. We're also going to bring it down here to the top one. And then again, distance to color here and to the bottom one there. 
Now you can see that we're starting to get um, some kind of effect, but this isn't really what we want. So just click here where it says F1 and we're going to change this to distance to edge. And this one as well, distance to edge. And now you can see that we've got um, that faceted look. And then what you can do is you can use these scale values here to change the size of these if you want to make them larger or smaller. And then just make sure the randomness is set to one for both of those, just so you get more of a um, broken up look. Oh, and this node right here, um, I didn't really use it, but it's just if you want to change the look um, a little bit more, you can just tweak this like this and get a completely different look. It's up to you. I didn't end up using it, so if you want to delete it, that's fine. <laughs> then you can just pretty much tweak these any way you want. You'll see as you move these around, you'll get different effects. You can even bring the bump down just a little bit, and I think it looks a bit nicer that way. Um, and if you crank these way up, you'll get like a different look altogether. So um, it's kind of cool. So that's the great thing about um, procedural is it can always be changed at any time and scaled. So let's just set that back to five. And then the final thing I wanted to show you is just for the color. Um, if you want to do um, just change the color here, of course you can do that. But what you can also do is if you hit shift A and type in RGB and just go to mix here and hook this up to the color, you can take um, a couple different colors and mix them together. And of course you can change the factor to get, you know, a different kind of look. What you can also do is add a couple more nodes here, shift A, and add in a brightness contrast node. And we'll hook that up to the factor. And then shift A, and we're going to add in a gradient texture here. Hook this up to the color. Then the final thing, we can hit Control T again to add mapping nodes. And then if we rotate this on 90 degrees and start to fiddle with this a bit, you can see now that we've got a gradient color going through this. And then if you use contrast here, you can change sort of how much it blends together um, or not. So it's just kind of cool. You can give it some different effects here. And that's pretty much it. And the great thing about this being procedural is you could just click another uh, model here and just select the texture. And then you can just make any changes that you want to um, this. Just make sure you see when I did that, it did it to both. So just make sure that when you do use a texture from a different mesh, you just copy it and then you can rename it elephant in this case. Now you can see that if we do any changes, it will only affect the one mesh and not both meshes. Then for mine, the final thing I did was just quickly add a plane and we can scale that up. And then if you just hit G and then hold shift and hit Z, you can just center it under here um, while locking it to the X and Y axis. And then hit tab to go into edit mode, hit two or click here and make sure that you've got edge selection on. And then you can hit E, Z and extrude down. And then we want to hit control R just to add some loop cuts here. Hit tab to go back into object mode. You can go into the modifiers property here and add a subdivision surface. Set that to three. Right click, shade smooth, and then we can just add a metallic material by going into the materials tab here, click new, and we can change this metallic to one, and we'll bring the roughness down here. Now if we go and change this over to cycles, you'll see that we've got some really nice reflections happening. Okay, so that's everything for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was super quick. Um, like I said, I'll be back every Saturday with a new tutorial. So thank you for your support. I'm going to try to do some hair dynamics and Manta Flow coming up in the future. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye.